and I'm just allergic to this one. And if there's one thing I want to do with my daughters, I want to kill the good girl. <laughs> the good girl, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know if, if girls are born to please, to want to be liked by their parents, because if they want to please and be liked by their parents, they also want to be pleased and liked by professors and teachers. They want to be pleased and liked managers. Like the good girl is like the worst thing, and it's, it, it sets you up to fail in the corporate world, in government, in anything you do. So the sooner you can stop wanting to please anyone, I can tell you what I do with my three daughters. I celebrate and congratulate them when they get in trouble in school. <laughs> And the tears that have been shed over just a little bit of trouble is, 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 is so wasted. And I'm telling you, if you look at boys and men, they're so comfortable getting in trouble. <laughs> like the concept of a good boy is not as prevalent as the concept of a good girl. You've got to drop it. You've got to get comfortable with tension. So while you're still in school, pick some fights, okay? No, but you got, I'm, I'm serious, I'm serious. You have to find peace with pissing people off. Because, and you have to somehow justify it. Like the way I justified it to myself is the following way. Somebody once told me that real change, real leadership is painful. So in other words, what you're asking people to, taking people through change is painful and it's emotional and you're going to get an emotional reaction. You need to get used to the heat in the kitchen. If you cannot take the heat in the kitchen, then you're going to shy away from any conflict, and it's just trouble. And I can tell you, however much I'm dying, dying to hire more women on Wall Street, there's nothing I would rather do than to hire more women into Wall Street. I am not hiring any good girls. Good girls are really any manager's worst nightmare. Because what happens with the good girl is we are out fighting the fight. And, and that's not just Goldman. In whatever field you're in, whether it's government, in politics, at Goldman, at any corporate, you want to win. Whatever, whatever win means. Be the best, get the most votes, whatever it is. And if you put someone in your team that is solving to please, then you get really worried as a manager because you know that whether it's the competition that's going to make inroads or it's external or internal teams are going to make inroads, like you just don't know how that person is doing because they're there to please you. You're not getting the truth. You're not getting the anger, you're not getting the emotions, you're not getting the defense. It, it becomes really, you have to constantly babysit a good girl. So I'd rather have a non-good girl that makes mistakes and sometimes get like really outbursts of anger and embarrasses herself at a meeting because she got frustrated. Like that, like that you can handle as a manager. You know where they are, you, you have the visibility, the transparency. The good girl is an enigma. It's a black hole and you don't know what's going on inside that person's head. So please, like, get away, like, get rid of the desire to be validated and told you're amazing all the time and get rid of the good girl. Get used to already now, don't look at your grades, don't like chase another trophy, and then again, get in trouble. Like really, I'm telling my girls all the time, we're high-fiving when they get in trouble on the school balls. Because they get used to tension, they get used to handling conflict, they get used to someone in, in a position of authority getting like upset with them, and they get comfortable with that not being the end of the world. Okay, last one. 